everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, we're talking about the design phase of putting together your retreat or your homestead. This is one of the most exciting parts of the process because it's like when you're gardening, it's kind of like the seed catalog part of it where all the doors are open, the sky's the limit, you can do whatever you want, and it's really exciting. But it can also be kind of daunting because you just have so many options. The first thing that you have to figure out is what type of building technique you want to go with uh, because based on whatever building technique you want to go with to create your structure that's going to have certain opinions on you know kind of how you lay the rooms out and everything i'll give you an example of that i mean you have there's post and beam construction stud construction straw bale construction there's, uh, there's concrete block construction cob adobe there's all different types of uh, construction materials you could go with and they each kind of have a vote on on how you build the structure for example if you're going with a stud construction a conventional kind of stud uh, wall construction that lends itself to rectangular shaped rooms yet yeah, that doesn't mean you can't make a circular room but it, you know stud construction tends to like rectangles that's the easiest way to do it whereas something like adobe or cob or something like that that lends itself to curves uh, shapes it doesn't mean you can't make a rectangular shaped room out of cob or adobe but you know, you have to you know, force the uh, the materials to kind of go in that direction. It, you know, none of that's impossible, but whatever you de decide you want to work in, whatever medium you want to work in, it has its own kind of predilections towards, you know, the shapes of rooms and all that. So you want to kind of decide what what you want to build and have it be suited uh, to be something that'll work in your area. I personally, I'm going to be going with post and beam construction. It's something that I'm familiar with. It's the way that I built my last homestead. I like the style. I, I, I feel like it's airy and it's, it's something that appeals to me. That doesn't mean that, you know, it's the best in the world or it's the only way to do it. Or if you want to, you know, build a homestead or a retreat, it's got to be post and beam. Absolutely not. It's just, it's what appeals to me and that's what I'm going to be going with. But whatever design approach and whatever uh, material approach you decide to go with, one of the great ways to start laying out rooms is using circles. Now, I, I know I just said that if you're going to be going with like, you know, post or beam or, uh, you know, stud construction, uh, you know, that likes rectangles. But to start working out the basic kind of layout of your home, circles are a great way of doing it. And, and the way that you do that is to kind of like create circles on a piece of paper that uh, kind of flow into each other. You know, may, you may want to have like your bedroom kind of walk right out into, you know, your kitchen in the morning, you know, to, to make breakfast. You may want to have your, you know, your bedroom next to a bathroom. You, the idea is you want to have different, um, different circles with different functions that are kind of flowing around in your house. And you want to be kind of shuffling those around and positioning those in a way that you can kind of imagine your workflow going. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, the house I'm in right now, this normal house, has a terrible workflow for the kitchen. Uh, the, the basement is where the wood stove is located. So in the winter time, when you're cooking on the wood stove, you have to walk all the way from the kitchen, all the way down a hallway, all the way downstairs, all the way across the, the width of the house to get over to the wood stove. It's a good 10 plus second trip. Uh, and if you can imagine, you know, when you're cooking in the kitchen, you know, if you're cooking on a range right next to you in the kitchen, you're chopping up vegetables and you're throwing them into the pan. You're chopping up more vegetables, you're throwing them into the pan. Now just imagine that, adding in the extra trip. You're chopping up vegetables, you walk out of the kitchen, you walk down a hall, you walk down a flight of stairs, you walk across the, the whole width of the house, you throw them into the pan. You walk back across the width of the house, you walk back up a, a length of stairs, you walk down a hallway, you walk back into the kitchen, you chop some more vegetables. You walk out of the kitchen, you, you get the idea. You don't want to build that kind of inefficiency into your house. So by uh, laying circles out of things that have kind of common use that you're going to be using together, it can really uh, increase your, the efficiency that you kind of go through your daily life. And, you know, if time is a premium to you and you want to, you know, spend more time doing things and less time kind of meandering around, walking through endless corridors in your house, you want to have things of common use uh, placed next to each other. Um, other things in your house that are a consideration are uh, the natural sort of environment of your house. Uh, my house is going to be bermed into the ground. Uh, that means it's going to have a cool back wall that's up against, you know, kind of that, uh, the bermed inside of the house. It's going to have a walkout basement. That, that cool, dark side of the house has natural attributes that are good for something like a pantry. Pantries want to be cool. They want to be dark. You know, there's some foods that don't want to have, uh, you know, light falling on them. Uh, so that's an, a natural place to put a pantry. It's not necessarily a natural place to put a, you know, a nice reading room. You don't want to be having like your, your you know, if you're going to have a reading room, you don't want to have that being a dark 
cold corner of your house. So you want to think about the areas of your house that are going to tend to be warmer, the areas that are going to tend to be cooler, the areas that are going to tend to be brighter, the areas that are going to tend to be darker. And you're going to want to harmonize those with the different functions that you're having uh, you know, going on in your house. Now, in today's modern age, people are used to like designing things poorly and then using energy, you know, usually fossil fuels, to kind of hammer through whatever purpose they wanted to actually do in that. You can do that, but uh, especially if you're going to try to do something off-grid, you're going to be taking and wasting a lot of your resources, you know, your energy resources, trying to, you know, fight against Mother Nature. And whenever you can work with Mother Nature instead of against her, it always makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> it makes things go a lot better. And, it, you know, it also has the added benefit of not wasting energy and, you know, pollution and all that kind of stuff. So for so many reasons, it's a good idea to think about the natural attributes of different parts of the structure you're going to build and try to harmonize whatever, you know, function you have going on with that area. I'm going to be integrating a lot of uh, technologies into this structure. There's going to be gray water uh, going on in this structure. There's going to be uh, solar hot water, du directly heating so uh, hot water uh, with the energy of the sun. I've uh, experienced a lot of solar cooking over the past couple of years. I know the enormous amount of uh, thermal energy that the sun can you know, put into things you know, with even just a small array. So I'm going to be using solar hot water in this house. Uh, I'm also going to be doing solar electric in this house, and there's going to be so many other technologies. But you know, without uh, blabbing too much about all the intricacies of it, let's take a, kind of a tour of the house that I'm going to be creating. And I, I built it in sort of a, an interesting, so, yeah, I didn't do it in CAD. It's not in CAD. Well, you'll, you'll see. I think it was kind of an interesting way to do a house walkthrough. Well, I decided to do this sort of simulation of my new homestead in Minecraft because I thought it would be a good way to kind of feel through the space and while Minecraft isn't the most um, you know scale accurate way of doing it in fact it's not at all uh, it, it is a good sense of kind of getting a sense of the space and here you can see the outside of the house right there and I was thinking maybe I might have goats at some point now these are Minecraft cows because they don't have goats but you know maybe I could have goats uh, you know as the sign says goats for milk and you know, certainly I've been thinking about maybe doing chickens, you know, chickens for eggs. But, you know, what we're, oh, wow, and they even have some eggs already for me. They've been hard at work. Anyway, what we're really interested in here, or at least I am, is the house structure. So we're going to move up here. And as you can see, all the windows kind of face south. And, uh, you know, they get a lot of that sunlight. And um, yeah, you probably, probably want to ignore this here um that's nothing particular uh but we're going to go in through the greenhouse and kind of check out this structure and uh see kind of how it how it flows so you can see that the uh, concrete here is uh merging right in with the, the greenhouse structure so part of its concrete part of its wood we'll go in through here a little bit of a stonework so that in the winter time when it's cold outside and you come in here you have plenty of space to kind of kick off your boots so you're not bringing snow into the house. I think there's going to be some water features in here, like the way that I had done at my last homestead. I had a fish pond in one of the greenhouses. I think I'd like to do that in here. So kind of use this to sort of represent that idea. Uh, this greenhouse is also going to get gray water from the house. That's where the gray water is going to come in. So we're going through the front door here into this kind of entryway area. And there's kind of a, a sitting area over here. There'll be nice light in here. I think. Uh, next to these stairs, I'll probably have a bookcase built in there. And this little lump next to the door, that'll be a closet. I wasn't able to put a door on it, just the way that Minecraft was working. But that'll be a coat closet for shoes and things. And this here will be a, a, ba a bathroom with uh, a shower and a toilet and stuff. I wasn't able to really fit it all in the scale of Minecraft, but that stuff's all going to be in there. And this bathroom here is going to get gray water from the bathroom on the uh, second floor that's just above it. So it'll be gravity drop ra uh, gray water right into there for use for flushing. Uh, again, here are all these south-facing windows that are going to get a lot of uh, sunlight coming in from the, uh, from the south there, both in the summer and in the winter. And right here we have the wood stove with the smokestack going straight up through this open space. And you can see that it's opened up to the other stories in the house, so it gives you a lot of sense of verticality. That's something I really appreciated with the first homestead. It had cathedral ceilings, and you could feel like you kind of stretch out even when you're cooped up in the winter time. And I thought that was kind of a nice, 
nice feeling there. Obviously, there'll be railings on these stairs, just another thing that doesn't really work so great in Minecraft. Uh, here's the kitchen area and a dining area. Uh, refrigerator right here. This sense of space between it and the wood stove is kind of exaggerated to feel maybe closer than it will really be. Um, yeah, obviously you don't want to necessarily have your wood stove right next to your refrigerator because one wants to be hot, the other wants to be cool. There's going to be a, a little bit of uh, cabinet space between these guys and uh, ha having uh, lived with a wood stove for a long time, I kind of have a, a pretty good sense of how far they really cast their heat out into the surrounding area. And uh, I made sure I factored that in and made sure that the refrigerator was, you know, far enough away and, and covered up so that it's going to be plenty cool. Uh, kind of going into the kitchen area here, uh, this is the best I could do for a, a range. This white thing is going to be where the oven is. Uh, this is all black countertop here and the sink right here. So when I'm washing dishes, you can look out into the greenhouse, get a little bit of light in through there. A little bit more counter space under here. We'll have some under, under cupboard lighting and up here will be all cupboards for storage up there. It's a good idea to try to build storage into these uh, kind of structures a lot because sometimes you, you forget about how much space you actually need for storing things. So this area here just has a really open feel. Again, kind of looking up into the upper levels of the house there. And right next to the kitchen is the pantry. And this will be the pantry area, which will walk back to the utility room at the back end here, and this, this feels a little bit more cramped than it's really going to be. It's, uh, it's about eight feet wide here. I mean, in this it looks like it's like three feet across, but in the real design it's about eight feet across, side to side, uh, and pretty long. So there'll be lots of storage space here with the pantry right next to the kitchen. It was really important to me to have the kitchen right next to the pantry and right next to the wood stove. So you can do cooking on the wood stove, working in the kitchen, grabbing things from the pantry, and they're all really proximal to each other. At the current house I'm in, uh, the, the work area is just really spread out. The refrigerator is really far from the sink, uh, the counter space is all spread out, and the pantry's down in the basement, as well as the wood stove's down in the basement. So if you're in the kitchen and you're chopping vegetables, here all you have to do is just turn over and drop them right onto the wood stove. But in the house I'm in currently, I have to walk down a flight of stairs and it's just, it's a really long work triangle uh, to be in the kitchen. So that's kind of the, the downstairs area here. So I'm gonna walk us up to the upstairs. And upstairs, as you can see, there's gonna be a, most of the library is gonna be in this upstairs area, kind of wrapping around these walls. Uh, and then it's gonna be mostly bedrooms off over here and a bathroom here, and we'll open up the bathroom door. I didn't really fill the bathroom up, but this will be a larger bathroom, and this is gonna have the washing machine and the you know, bathtub, sink, toilet, that kind of thing. And again, the water that, that comes out of this bathroom from all of those things, except for the toilet, is gonna go down to a holding tank just below here, and it'll be able to be used for flushing toilets down in the lower bathroom. Uh, right over here, I mentioned that there was going to be a bedroom. There's one bedroom here uh, that has a, you know, a lot of nice light access. You know, looking out all these windows, this, this one looks into the greenhouse. So this one will be able to get, collect greenhouse warmth in the winter. And this one looks out to the south over here. Uh, just across from the bedroom, there is the potential of having another bedroom. But really, the plan for this place is to use it as a really big walk-in storage closet. So that's what that space is going to be. Uh, and then we're going to pop up to kind of the, the loft area. Right here is going to be, you know, if we're going to watch a film, I think we'll have a couch over here. And there's going to be, uh, against where these stairs are, there'd be like a monitor there. there might, there'll be a little bit more of a wall feel to this area here. Again, just in Minecraft, I wasn't able to do a whole wall. But you can hang out here and watch a film or something like that. So we're going to go up to the, the loft area. Again, there will be railings in the actual house. They just didn't fit into here in Minecraft. Coming up all the way up here. And you can see, coming up from here, you get this really great sense of space going all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom. Uh, you know, if River wanted to do any experiments dropping things, as long as the wood stove's not on, <laughs> I guess this would be a place to do it. Uh, there's a closet right at the top of the stairs here, just a a little closet right there. 
And there's two bedrooms on either side here. One bedroom here, and this one faces west. River's kind of thinking he wants to claim this one, the west-facing bedroom, to see the sunset. And then there's a, another bedroom over here. It's kind of a mirror image, faces east. And this one's just a little bit larger than the other one. So that's a run through of the space. Uh, all the, uh, the different areas kind of work into each other. Uh, the, the warm areas try to stay near the warm areas. The cool areas try to stay near the cool areas. That's one thing that was kind of important to me is, uh, for example, the pantry right back here. This is going to be thermally separate from the rest of the house. So the pantry and the utility room don't really need to be heated and don't want to be heated. You want to keep your pantry kind of cool. So when this door closes, that area back there is not going to be receiving heat from the rest of the house. Uh, the walls are going to be insulated, and it's going to be thermally separate uh, to you know just keep the food that much uh, you know fresher and cooler. Uh, why don't we go out through the other greenhouse over here? And this is uh, what I'm going to be kind of referring to as the dry greenhouse. This won't have a lot of gray water pouring through, but we are going to do uh, hanging laundry in this greenhouse. It, how did a chicken get in here? Well, I guess it walked through the open doors. We are going to do hanging laundry that will span right across this area. All these greenhouses are going to need to be and have uh, plenty of venting in them to keep the fresh air kind of coming in and um, uh, you know, just keeping them from getting musty. That's something I noticed at the last homestead I built. They, they had a tendency of getting too, too humid. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to be careful about that this time and try to... Uh, you know, keep them well vented. So that's a general run through of the house. Now let's talk about uh, sort of where I am in the process of getting to this point. Once you've decided on what type of house structure that you'd like to build, now's the time to kind of do what I was talking about in the last video, about starting to engage with the town officials in your area to kind of find out about the permitting process and all of that stuff. I'm going to share with you a little bit about what the permit process and the build process is like in my area. It may be different in your area, so you'll want to check on that. But in my area, the first step of the process, once you kind of have a design for the house, is to do a perk test. If you aren't going to be connecting to sewers, you need to see if you can install a septic system in that in that area and a perk test is a test to see whether or not the soil will percolate water through it's a standard kind of thing so you're going to need to hire an engineer to come out and to, to run a perk test on your on your location once they do that they're going to be able to draw up what's called a site plan and a site plan is kind of the overall blueprint of the landscape area where your house is going to go in. It'll show where the house is going to be. It'll show where, you know, your septic tank is going to be and your distribution box and leach field. Those are all kind of septic tank related things. It'll show where your driveway is coming in. It'll show elevations. It'll become kind of a master plan for putting in all of your stuff. At that point, you want to really get serious about getting all of your permits. You know, you can be doing kind of the permitting and everything, you know, leading up to that. But at this point, you really want to make sure you get all your permits because at this point, you are ready to start clearing your land. So you want to make sure that you're, you're cool with the building inspector, the board of health, you know, if there's a conservation commission and all that. You want to make sure you're good with all of them and then you can start clearing your land. You can clear your driveway in and you can start clearing your house site. That is where I am in the process right now is that we're just about to kind of start doing all that kind of stuff and uh you know it's an exciting time to to be uh you know getting ready to do all that kind of stuff uh, once you have the house site all cleared out you can start excavating for your foundation uh you know you want to get down uh you know down to you know clean soil where they can put in the the foundation they're going to pour a footing they're going to put a foundation wall on top of that i, I say they because that's not a part of the process that i personally do that's something that you could do yourself. I, you know, people can pour their own concrete. They can lay their own concrete walls and everything. That's just not something that I tend to do myself because I, I prefer to have someone just come in and pour it and then I step in after that. Once you have a really nice foundation poured, uh, you're going to need to do drainage around it, backfill around it. Uh, I would recommend highly uh, insulating on the outside of the foundation wall. I know a lot of people, and including in this place where I'm in now, in this basement at Normal House, the, uh, the insulation's on the inside of the wall. That misses, in my opinion, a huge opportunity to use the enormous thermal mass of your basement walls to help keep your house a moderated temperature. Uh, so if you can put... Uh, foam insulation on the outside of the wall that will you know insulate the walls but at the same time it'll allow you to use your walls to kind of stabilize the temperature within within your house 
Once you get all, all that stuff up, you're going to put a sill plate down on top of your foundation. Uh, that'll get screwed right down on top because, uh, you know, your uh, contractors or you would have left little bolts sticking up out of the foundation so you can attach your sill plate down. And then for me, the next step is to start building the floors and building the actual ribs of the house because I'm going to be doing a post and beam design. Once all the ribs are up uh, and, you know, you kind of have the rough skeleton of your house, you can sit back rest on your laurels for about five minutes, say, wow, you know, I can finally kind of visualize the house's form now. And now it's time for me to start putting a, a walls up on the house. That's the way that my build uh, approach because it's post and beam works. You put up the ribs, then you slap the walls up on the outside of that. Um, I'm going to be using tongue and groove uh, pine board walls. Uh, after that, there's going to be a house wrap that goes around, kind of a vapor barrier uh, that goes around everything. Uh, after the vapor barrier is up, uh, Foam insulation goes up again on the outside of the form, kind of the same way that uh, the, the foundation was done. You have the foundation and the, the insulations on the outside of that. It's the same way with this post and beam design where it has the inside, inside boards, vapor barrier, and then the foam on the outside. That's all held in place with some uh, strapping boards. And then you're free to put the roof on. Then I'll be putting the roof on the house. Once the roof gets onto the house, it's a very happy day because you know that the house is at least kind of like weather tight and it can get some snow on it, you know, if you're getting close to winter and it'll shed off. That's an exciting day uh, to finally get the, the roof onto your house. Uh, after the roof, you're going to uh, slap the windows onto the house. And again, this is my design approach, you know, depending on what design approach you use, you know, you may have a different sequence, but this is what's ahead for me. Windows are going to go up for me. Once the windows are on the house, the whole house is, you know, tight at that point. You can tape up and uh, seal up all of your, uh, your gaps. Uh, if you need to do any energy testing, that's the time when you would be doing the energy testing, doing a blower test to see, you know, whether you've sealed your house up well enough. In this uh, structure, uh, the wiring goes on the outside of the insulation. So once all the windows are up, I'm going to be running all the wiring around the house. Uh, and then after the wiring all goes up, you uh, get, you know, whether there might be an electrical inspection at that point. And then the exterior walls go up on the outside. At that point, the house from the outside looks finished. It looks like a complete house. And then the last step is to go inside and do all the things inside the house, build all the inside walls, cabinets, all that kind of stuff. It's a whole job once the whole house gets, uh, you know, filled up, but it's an exciting time because then you finally have your structure and your structure can start actually working for you. So that is the design and build process that's ahead for me. Again, where I am at the process right now is we're just about to uh, get people coming in to start clearing the land and, you know, opening up that house site and, and get going with it. So that's it. Uh, if you're interested in doing your own uh, house design, there are so many books that you can get into that will uh, give you all sorts of tips for that kind of thing. Uh, you know, there's plenty of internet sites that you can go to that, uh, you know, have lots of, you know, kind of free plans or just sample plans that can kind of get you thinking, get you brainstorming about it. But it is a super exciting thing to, to get involved in. And I don't, I think it's a shame that so many people, so many human beings miss out on this kind of fundamental aspect of being a living creature on this planet. Humans are kind of, well, maybe hermit crabs. <laughs> Humans and hermit crabs are kind of the only creatures that don't make their own home. They, you know, commission it from someone else. They find an old one, a used one or something like that. Uh, and it's such a, it's hard to describe the feeling of putting together your own home unless you've done it for yourself. But it is, it is a really grounding experience that connects you back to the millennia of human beings and all animals being responsible for creating their own home, creating their own kind of life support system. Uh, it's just, it's a part of being a living creature in my opinion. And it's a real shame that more people don't get to experience that and appreciate that for themselves. I'm just about to get to do that. I'm gonna bring you along in the process and I hope that it encourages you to consider doing it for yourself. That's it, thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.